Hey y'all! Welcome to another episode of Soul Food Sundays. I have missed y'all. I have been sick, yo. Like, I couldn't bear turn the camera on and put my cape on to bring forth a message for nobody about nothing with the way that I have been feeling and the divine and religious been leading me to take a moment to really uh, digress and tend to myself and so that's what I've been doing your girl not had but has COVID and I have felt terrible <laughs> uh, so you might hear a little cough and a little sneezing and I guarantee I'm not gonna be before you long because I get very feverish and hot but I feel so much better than I have been over the past it's been almost two weeks now so uh, I have really been feeling led to bring forth a message for you all and so I am here uh, not a hundred percent recovered or in the clear but feeling well enough to follow the dictates of my heart and bring forth the Soul Food Sunday's message for you guys. So I hope that this message has found you all well. Shout out to everybody who's been checking on me and offering to bring me groceries and run errands for me. I really appreciate it. And some of that I have had to take y'all up on in the spirit of receptivity uh, because uh, sis has needed a little help from time to time, but I am okay. Um, like I said, not 100% in the clear, but able to scoot around the house and get some things done. And uh, when I get hot, I sit my butt right back down. Um, I do a lot of sleeping. Y'all excuse me, got to have some water, honey. Nobody told me that uh, with COVID comes in some intense dehydration. I mean, my scalp is even hella dry. <laughs> y'all be careful out there making sure that you are taking care of your immune systems i know exactly how i ended up uh, with covid i was traveling and eating in a way that uh, i don't normally eat and uh, but when i travel i allow myself to just eat what i want and so did that of course that compromises your immune system came back from my trip to New Orleans and went to my 20 year class reunion. And that's exactly where I contracted COVID from, being at that damn reunion. Um, because my immune system was compromised. I didn't do a whole lot of drinking or smoking, but it don't take much uh, to compromise your immune system. And so I have gone all this time without getting COVID and then bam, 20 year reunion and here come the vegan. So, uh, again, thank you to everybody who's been supporting me during this time. And i just been playing low, y'all. Been getting some rest. Been getting some downloads uh, about the energy. And so, that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, COVID is just one of the many uh, things I got going on uh, in life right now. And so, for many of you... Uh, you may find that the things that you have going on, it may not necessarily be COVID or some sickness or something, but you just got something that you're having to face and deal with. Um, it is because there is some massive ascension taking place and we are being led to uh, face our wounding as we move into a new moon in cancer and we are in cancer season. Shout out for all the cancers. Uh, happy birthday to you all. We are in cancer season and we're going to have a new moon in cancer on, I think it's June 28th or 29th. And so you may find yourself being faced with some mother wounds because uh, cancer is a very maternal uh, energy. You may find yourself in a position to have to mother and nurture yourself more to look at how you do that now and to uh, improve on how you're practicing radical self-care or nurturing, reparenting yourself. Uh, cancer is a water energy, emotional <coughs> energy. And so you may find yourself in situations where you feel like your emotions are being stirred a bit more 
or you're having to efface some of your um, emotional issues but whatever the case do not spiritually bypass don't try to bypass those experiences the lessons that they're coming to teach you the feelings that are coming up for you that are serving as a compass to point you in a direction of where you're needing to heal at this point on your journey don't try to distract yourself with food and TV and drinks and alcohol and YouTube videos or whatever the case. I know for me, I could have easily used Turquoise Majesty as a, um, a mask or a distraction while I have been down sick with COVID, but I refused. Um, I knew that God sitting me down in such a way meant it was something that I needed to tap into, even if it was just rest and that I was going to do that and that I couldn't show up for y'all. <laughs> when I'm not showing up for myself and um, I know y'all respect it because y'all know like I know that that is self care that is self love and here in terms of majesty that is what we promote to thine own self be true um, we're also in the summer solstice happy summer to you all I didn't get to do anything extravagant for the summer solstice but it's all good I'm just happy to be alive <laughs> And so uh, we're going to be pulling from the Earth Warriors Oracle. And because I don't want to uh, risk getting winded or getting so hot and overwhelmed that I have to cut the video short, I'm going to pull one card from the Earth Warriors uh, to see what message the Spirit has for us. And also I'm going to clarify with the Moonology before we wrap up. Um, my books are currently closed until I am feeling better, at which point they will be, I think I may be able to open them up temporarily for like a week, and then I have oral surgery <laughs> coming up on July 8th. So that'll be more downtime I need, and my books will be back closed, so I'll just stay tuned. I'll keep you guys posted on that, but as of right now, uh, my books are closed. I'm not doing any readings until I feel 100% uh, better uh, and I don't know when I'll do another soul for Sundays but I was really being led to do this one and I felt a lot better and able to do it so that's what we're doing so Father God, Mother Earth, Ancestors and Spirit guys, what message do you have for the collective at this time, please bring forth the best message for our highest good as we move into another moon cycle, another week, this new summer season, what message do you have for your people's spirit in Takana, child of the light, represented by the number three, 33, breaking down to a six. I don't know about you all, but I was very intentional about how I manifested during the sixth portal on June 6th. Um, so I hope that you all were as well. And there's been a lot of light and solar energy coming through for me. Um, make sure you're soaking up some sun, y'all. Make sure that you're making your sun tea and that you're doing your sun salutations and you're uh, spending some time with the energy of the sun so that you are replenished and rejuvenated and able to take advantage of the blessing that the sun energy is to us. Because you are a child of the light and here you see in this image we have a dream catcher, we have a a yellow butterfly very symbolic of transformation and change and also solar plexus activation which has been a lot of that so that we can step out with the confidence to do what it is that we were born to do also you see the moon here in its various cycles leading from a new moon to a full moon and we are entering the new moon in um, cancer like i said in a few more days so we're definitely needing to tap into that energy new moon are good for manifestation so i hope that you guys are intentional about the way that you are manifesting uh during this new moon in cancer let's see number 33 also it's this this energy is speaking to us being a child of light like i said cancer energy is very much a maternal energy a motherly of energy and so you may very well be tapping into your inner child um, as this new moon and cancer energy comes in for us but it says there is a divine light that does not cast a shadow 
nor does it cast judgment, even though it reveals truth, a truth that is sometimes hard to acknowledge and requires that we change our ways. True divine light is healing. It is unifying. It brings hope and illumines the way. I want to stop right there and go back to where it talks about changing our ways because the moon often represents those things that are lying in the shadows. But the sun comes out to shine light on those things so that we can better see who we really are, who we're meant to be, so that we can have clarity, so that we can check our egos. It says other sorts of light exist on this planet that are not so pure, nor so helpful. Those sorts of light may appear stunningly bright, yet in effect create a separation and increase ego. You can recognize genuine divine presence, not by how dazzling it may appear at first, but by what your devotion to that divine light evokes in your heart and your world. Trust your feelings over appearances. Move away from influences that create fear, negativity, or doubt in you. A lot of you may find as uh, we move forward into this energy that nurturing and mothering yourself uh, in this cancer energy looks like tightening up on the types of influences you allow around you, the naysayers, the people who help to cultivate fear within you, those people who aren't in alignment with where you are headed, those people who speak negatively um, when you share your ideas those type of people they no longer have room in your life and so you're needing to do that deep cleaning to cleanse your energy and protect your energy from those people and you can't discriminate um about who that is you know what i'm saying like because it's all tied to your life purpose you can't allow those people to deter you from your life purpose as you are actively and intentionally getting in alignment so since spiritual protection is being offered, refuse to be dazzled by ego, masquerading as something spiritual. Through your prayers and efforts, spiritual light has been accumulating on the inner planes, even though you may not sense that consciously as yet. There will be an intersection of events and circumstances in your physical world through which that light shall pour forth and manifest itself as grace. Continue with your spiritual devotion. There is something truly good to come of it. When we speak of spiritual devotion, y'all, it ain't about like me turning on this camera and talking to y'all. Yeah, that is me doing light work. That is me pouring into the collective. But the real spiritual work is the work that I do just me and God in private, in devotion. That's my real spiritual work. And it all works together hand in hand because if I don't do that work individually, privately, um, I'm not able to show up authentically for you all. It says, in the Incan tradition, Inti is the physical sun and the spiritual presence inherent in the sun's life-giving energy. Intikana is the being who is one with Inti, a child of the sun. In the esoteric mystery schools, solar child and solar angel are terms for the soul, the deeper aspect of us that is connected to the spiritual light. This oracle brings you understanding that there is a new depth of soul connection opening up for you. We enter such a sacred process through a challenge known in spiritual traditions as initiation. So you may be wondering why you're going through what you're going through, why you're feeling how you're feeling. All of us are going through an initiation, and it's an initiation that is cultivating and nurturing us as children of the light. When we are faced with a deep unknowing, which is what happens when we are growing spiritually and moving through a spiritual initiation, we have outgrown what our minds are capable of providing. We need more knowledge, more wisdom, more light, so that we can find our way through the darkness of initiation and into the blessing of new life waiting on the other side of the process. When we turn our attention to the soul instead of applying logic and intellect to figure out yet another doomed plan, to conquer the irrepressible evolution inherent in the spiritual path, we finally gain comfort. Hope is a quality of the soul. It allows us to bear the uncertainty when according to a greater wisdom, there's something that we cannot know the answer to, at least for now. Hope gives us patience so that we can learn how to feel our soul connection more deeply and grow into the wisdom of the answers we need. 
We stop fumbling about in the library of the intellect and instead seek out the answer from the source that can provide it, which is the illumined temple of our own soul. Initiation often involves an element of the unexpected. We typically feel unprepared for it, even though at a soul level, we have been working towards it for a long time. If it's happening, however, then we are actually ready for it. Such spiritual testing is intimidating to the ego, but the soul knows how to move through the process. Trust your inner self and trust in the light and the unconditionally supportive assistance that the universe will lend to your purpose. Then you can be fearless, impervious to manipulation, and remain steady and faithful in the face of challenge. The Solar Festival of Enti was a celebration of new life, which was held at the start of a new planting season. It is realistic to cultivate hope and cheerfulness, both of which nurture the heart, especially during initiation. Make sure that you all are intentional about having nurturing energy around you, eating life-giving foods that nurture you, taking naps if that's what you need to nurture you. When you take your bath, lay in the fetal position because that is the closest thing to being in the mother's womb and help you. that will help you to feel like you are in your mother's symbiotic wounds, uh, fluids, being nurtured. Take your self-love bath, light your self-love candles, do whatever self-care practice you're needing to do, be it meditation, prayer, therapy, a walk, starting a garden, writing a poem, whatever it is that makes your soul feel nurtured. But you cannot cheat in this process. You can't smoke it away. You can't drink it away. <laughs> If you are grieving, check out that, um, um, dang, that video is private. Hit me up. <laughs> uh, if you are needing to, uh, some tips and pointers and, and whatnot on, um, the grief process as you are going through your initiation, uh, email me. I'm not doing a whole lot of talking these days, but I can definitely respond to an email. But it says this oracle foretells of a positive conclusion of any initiation of soul. If you or a loved one have been plagued by dark and depressing thoughts, this oracle brings a spiritual intervention of joyful light. Open up to the joyful light of love and peace to fill your heart and your home. You have the power to call this in because you are acknowledged as a child of the light. Rest in the divine light within, imagining that you can peer into your soul and be warmed by the light and life of the inner sun that shines within your soul, which is the true light of bright spirit. From that place of inner peace, luminous love, and safe refuge, you can proceed with boldness, patience, wisdom, and hope. The oracle asks you to cultivate a sense of self-worth and knowledge and acknowledge the goodness within you. Without needing to be perfect, you don't just have light within you. You are the light. Remember, shine. We need you. Y'all, affirm yourself. Affirm the light within you. There's an uh, invocation that goes along with this uh, message, and it says, I affirm the light within me. I call for the true light of the divine to shine bright and clear, showing the way on earth. I am the light, and the light is within me. I trust my soul and the spiritual light within that guides me always. May the light in all hearts be stirred into awakening with unconditional love, grace, and mercy. So be it. I'm going to include this um, invocation in the uh, in the description box for you guys. One of the key words, key terms, key concepts that came up in this reading is the need to hope make sure <coughs> that you don't lose hope on what it is that your heart desires what it is you are being led to no matter what is going on around you we have the supreme court justice just overturned roe versus way but guess what we still have to have hope that new earth is upon us that our light will continue to shine and in our personal lives as well as globally that we are going to conquer as long as we continue to have hope that better days are not only ahead for us but that we're having good days now that we're having joyful days now don't allow the masses to dictate your joy dictate your happiness dictate your hope because you are a child 
of the night. So spirit, please clarify the message of the child of the night and what this new moon in Cancer is bringing in for us. We've already figured that it is bringing in increased hope for us. That if we have been depressed or know somebody who's been depressed, things are going to start to turn up for them or turn up for us. Oh, damn, I didn't know something came out. Look, right on top of it, adjustments are required. You're needing to make some adjustments. You're needing to make some changes. You're needing to adjust who you got around you whispering in your ear and giving you um, fugazi advice. You needed to adjust what you're eating. You needed to adjust what you're watching. You needed to adjust your beliefs, your values, how you're showing up in the world. You needed to adjust how you're getting rest or the lack thereof. You need to adjust how much of your business you're sharing with people. But adjustments are required. Because at the top of the deck, your hard work is paying off. You've been planting seeds. You've been working on yourself. You've been facing some deep, dark um, energies within you. And you're going to reap the benefit. You are very close to achieving your goal at the bottom of the deck. So keep the faith. Continue to hope, continue to dream, and continue to keep putting one foot in front of the other. And this is coming from somebody whose body is full of the coronavirus at this time. <laughs> and hot as hell, winded a little bit, uh, tired, sleepy, the whole nine yards. Like, I ain't even gonna lie, y'all. I'm ill about you. But better days are coming. I will be better and 100% well soon. So with that being said, y'all, I hope that this message found you well. If it did not find you well, I hope that it leaves you well. Remember to stay hopeful and stay prayerful. And keep putting one foot in front of the other. Keep moving toward your North Star. Peace.